Welcome to Excel 2013 Statistical Analysis video number 47. Hey, if you want to download this workbook for Chapter 7 and this is the second file, click on the link below the video. Hey, we got to talk about our last example for Chapter 7 and talk about the Central Limit Theorem. Now, we've already done a bunch of examples using the Central Limit Theorem, but let's review and do one last example for Chapter 7 before we move on to Chapter 8. Hey. Central limit theorem, in selecting a random sample of size n from a population, the sampling distribution of x bar, or sample means, can be approximated by the normal distribution as sample size becomes larger. Hey, if the distribution is symmetrical in the first place, then n greater than 10 will work. If it's thick-tailed, or skewed, we can use n greater than 30. If it's heavily skewed, we can use n greater than 50. So as long as our n is big enough, we just take a sample and compare it to the standard normal curve. So use of the central limit theorem, we can reason about the sampling distribution of x bar with absolutely no information about the shape of the original distribution. This means we could take one sample and compare it to the standard normal curve using norm.s.dis or the normal curve norm.dis. Now most of the time we're using normal curve, but each time we're checking to see if our sample result is reasonable or not. If the sample mean seems reasonable, then the original process or claim seems reasonable. If the sample mean does not seem reasonable, then the original process or claim is not reasonable. So we want to come over and see our last example. And just to get a visual of what that reasonable means, here's a distribution. If we go ahead and get a sample mean in here, it seems reasonable. Way out here, it doesn't seem reasonable. And we'll explain more about that later in this video. Now here's our example. And it's similar to the one we did earlier with some slightly changed numbers. And this example is the same example we'll start with next chapter. So an insurance company claims that the average cost per year of the policy is 822 bucks. The standard deviation for the population is known to be 202 bucks. What is the probability of getting a sample mean plus or minus about 23 bucks? If we take a random sample and get a sample mean of 850 with n equals to 300, is the original claim of 822 bucks, does it seem reasonable? Now here in this example, we have the sample data. So right down here, sample x bar. Remember, it's a point estimator of the population parameter. We're going to go ahead and take our sample. It had to be a random sample. We have our data over here, Control, Shift, Down Arrow, Shift, Enter to put that in the cell and jump up. So we actually took our sample here of 850 bucks. Now in this problem, the, the margin of error is listed up here. But let's go ahead and calculate that. We need to calculate our standard error. As we saw in our last video, standard error. Here's the formula here. Most of the time, you're not using the correction factor. And we want to check. But first, let's calculate our n equals, and I'm going to use count because we're counting numbers. Control, Shift, Down Arrow, Shift, Enter. So that sample had a size of 300. Now we can check to say, hey, is our sample size compared to our population size, is it less than or equal to 5%? You bet. So we don't need to use that correction factor. Now let's calculate our standard error. We'll need that when we're calculating our probability, because remember, this is the sampling distribution of our x bars. So we need to dramatically reduce the sigma using our standard error formula equals Sigma, that's given in this chapter. Next chapter, we'll see what to do when it's not given. And we'll take the square root of our sample size. So there we go, $11.66. I'm going to come up here, and yes, we had our margin of error. But oftentimes, we're calculating our margin error based on a number of standard deviations. So in this case, we want to have two standard deviations on either side of our population mean. So I'm simply going to multiply that times 2. That's the right down the middle of this curve is the actual population mean, mu, which of course is equal to our expected x bar. So that's right down the middle. We're going to subtract some and add some. Let's calculate our low x bar. There's the population 
mean or our expected x bar. And we're going to subtract our margin of error x bar on the upper side. We're going to take our population mean or expected x bar and add 2 times our standard error and Enter. Now, we should be able to already guess what the probability is because, remember, Z is number of standard deviations. And so many of the calculations we've done so far in this class are all about how many standard deviations. And two standard deviations is about 95%. But let's go ahead and do our formula. We do norm.dist. Hey, it says x, but we're talking x bar here. And we're perfectly allowed to put x bar in there. The bigger, comma, our mean. Comma, not standard deviation of the population. It's our standard error. Comma, 1 for cumulative. That'll go from the low end all the way up to this bigger x bar minus norm.dist. It says x, but we know these are x bars. That's the lower. The second one that gets subtracted is always the probability of the lower. Comma, mean. Population or expected x bar standard deviation, that is the standard error. Comma 1, close parentheses, Control Enter. It says 95 cents, but we know that's number formatting. I'm going to go up to Home, drop down for General or Control Shift tilde or grave accent. So the probability that we could go out and get an x bar between this lower and upper is 0.95. Visually, that's what this means here. Broop, there's the lower, there's the upper. All of this probability in here, this is where most of the values lie. So if we go out and get an x bar in here, we're going to say, hey, you know, it seems reasonable we'd get one here. Now there's a 2.5% risk on either side that we could get a really small x bar. But it's so unlikely that we could get an x bar out here that when we go and get 850 and it's not in this interval, it's actually way out here. Then we say, you know, it's so unlikely that we could could get that 850 in an actual sample that we're going to say the original claim of 822 doesn't seem reasonable. Now, we could say this a few ways. We are 95% sure that our x bar will lie between about 799 and 845. We also can say to explicitly recognize that there's some risk, we run a 5% risk that our x bar will lie outside the interval of 799 to 8. 45. Down here, our x bar of 850 is outside our interval. And because the chances of this are so small, like 5%, we say that it does not seem reasonable that we could take a sample and have gotten 850. Our sampling error is not acceptable. Let's look at a picture down here. These are all the x bars. This is the sampling distribution of x bar. There's our mean. There's our standard error, the lower, the upper. Now, our sample, we went out and got it. And even though there's a chance it's out here, we are going to say that it seems too unlikely to get this, so the original claim is not reasonable. But if we had gone out and gotten an x bar of 837, it's within this range. We would then say, hey, the original claim seems reasonable. Now, in chapter 9, we'll use these techniques here in hypothesis testing. And we'll be even more careful with our language. We'll say things like, even though 2.5% of the sample means would occur out in this range right here. Because getting a sample of 850 is so unlikely, we say that from our sample evidence, it seems unlikely that our original claim seems reasonable. Because samples almost always have sampling error, the sampling error with x bar equals 850 is not acceptable, whereas the x bar with 837, that sampling error is acceptable. Now, in this chapter, we have created point estimates and compared them to the sampling distribution of x bar. And we make statements like we are 95% sure that the x bar lies between 799 and 845. Now, next chapter, when we don't know the population mean or standard deviation for the population, we're not going to be able to make statements like this. But we'll go out and take a sample. And instead of comparing x bar directly to a known population mean, we'll make what's called a confidence interval. And we'll have similar statements, but they'll be called confidence interval.
All right, I can't wait for chapter eight. See you next video.